Well, hey there, everybody. Pastor Travis and I'm joined by Dr. Foster today, and we want to say thank you so much for joining us right here at City Church for a very special Sunday. Today is going to be Vision Sunday, as we're talking about what God has for us at City Church for the next year, right? Yeah, and I'm excited because you guys are getting firsthand everything that's going to be going on and and we've got several projects that are very vital to what's going on and i just want to give you guys heads up on it because you can partner with us from wherever you are you know we we saw this past week uh our youtube numbers from the first 10 months of this year what an astounding 1.1 million of you are joining us and so I, i just want to cast this opportunity to you Today, you can partner with us with one of our incredible projects that we've got going on over the course of the next 12 months. Um, And there are three. One of them is uh, we're uh, recouping some, we spent about $63,000 with AC units. We're gonna recover about 30,000 of that in this project. The next one is we're building a church in Yudamagras, Peru. It's the second most human traffic port in the entire world. Wow. And so I, I'm excited Crazy. to be able to raise a tent pole and put a lamp stand in the middle of one of the darkest places. Amen. And so uh, part of it's going to that. And then finally, we're gonna be finishing out our LED structure, which cool. is gonna make a difference for everyone here live. And it's also gonna translate to you as well, wherever you're watching. So yeah. uh, they're gonna put some information on the screen. Of course, you can always give through our app. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can give through citychurch.live. You can give by texting the word city to 888-364-4483 just to name a few and so yeah those are those are some exciting ways that you can partner with us today absolutely we are so thrilled that you guys are able to join us online and you're part of those youtube numbers that make us so excited because what they represent is not just a bunch of numbers that's right but they represent the word of god going forth and people like yourself who are able to hear the word of god preached each and every sunday and that's an exciting thing for us right here at city church absolutely we we do what we do because of you and so uh it's not just a number to us it's names absolutely and that's what's so vital to us so thank you for being part of our extended media family no doubt so we're about to start service in just a couple of minutes i think so why don't you guys go ahead and make sure that you got your bibles ready make sure that you got a notebook and a notepad and uh Make sure that you guys are ready for what God is doing right here in service today. It is going to be awesome. And we'll be back with you guys in just a little bit. God bless you. God bless. church can we give God some glorious praise this morning amen is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning he kept our family at night he kept the thieves and the robbers away come on come on we got breath in our lungs this morning come on let's give God a shout of praise this morning come on are you ready to worship was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing Till I met you. Come on, say it. You called. You called my name. And 
my sin was heavy. A chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. But you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I had a vision. My eyes are open. When you call my name. Your freedom is all I know. The old may knew. Jesus, when I met you. Come on, say, you call my name. You call my name. And I ran out that way. Yeah. 
Come on, if you believe that, come on and say it again. Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing better than Jesus. Better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, let's declare it all over the house. Say there. Really mean it from your heart to say it again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than Church, come on. Let's make some noise today. Give it up for King Jesus in this place. What a powerful time of worship. Come on. Will you give it up for our worship team? Don't they do a fantastic job every single week, knocking it out of the park? My goodness. Well, welcome to Vision Sunday. Vision Sunday. You might say, Pastor, why are we spending a whole Sunday on vision? I'm so glad you asked. Here's what the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse number 18. If you have the app, uh, you can uh, observe the notes in the app today. Proverbs chapter 29, verse number 18. It says, where there is no vision, people perish. Where there is no vision, people perish. So the reason we're taking an entire Sunday and talking about vision, because if we don't do what God has put in my soul, in our hearts to do today, people will perish. People will suffer eternally if we don't do what God is telling us to do. People will suffer in this life if we don't. People will perish if we don't have a fresh vision burning from God in our soul. And so just as a reminder, I want to take us through some of our core values so that we're all on the same page together. Again, uh, it's in the, uh, the app today. Uh, you can follow along with me there. We exist to demonstrate God's kingdom through generosity. Everybody shout generosity. Generosity. We exist to demonstrate. Generosity is not something that we merely think about. It's something we demonstrate. It's something that we do. Uh, For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. The kingdom of God has to have manifestation in order for it to be linked to the kingdom of God. So generosity is the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Next, we exist to illustrate the kingdom of God through creativity. Now, I'm just going to cover a few uh, of our sermon series over the course of the last year. And if you guys remember it, some of you are new and you may not remember it, it's okay. But if you remember it and you enjoyed that, I want you to cheer. This is like a, a pep rally for all the creativity we've done over the last year. So, so let's, uh, let's think about, how about City Christmas last year? Do you remember? Wasn't that an incredible thing? Man. 
that was a historic attendance. And uh, about, we had about four times as many as we did three years before. And I'm just telling you, the best is yet to come, all right? So how about uh, Who's Your Daddy, our Abraham series. Did you guys enjoy that? Who's Your Daddy? How about the Palm Sunday extravaganza? You know, we had about 100 people, I think, in costume. This whole thing, we turned the whole lobby into this Jerusalem bazaar. What an incredible, creative experience. Of course, Easter out at, uh, uh, at Shelby Farms and here as well. Now, and after that, we went on location from the seven churches in Revelation. I filmed all over Turkey, and we brought you the best archaeological and uh, geological and theological teaching from the Word of God uh, live on video from all over Turkey. It was a phenomenal series. How many of you guys enjoyed that series? Come on, make some noise. How about our dinosaur series? Did you guys enjoy that? Man, the creativity was fantastic. And if you're new with us today, you're like, dinosaur series. Yeah, you got to go back and check it out. It was a lot of fun. How about we just wrapped up our very first At The Movies. Did you enjoy At The Movies? So we exist to illustrate the kingdom of God through creativity. You might be asking, why is it that creativity is part of our core values? How many of you know we serve a creative God? God is the most creative entity. So when we lean into creative thoughts, creative ideas, we're simply mirroring the majesty of our maker. And if you don't believe that God is creative, you haven't been to the zoo lately. Huh? You haven't looked at the aardvark. You haven't looked at the blobfish. Come on, I wish I had somebody. You haven't looked at the hippopotamus. You have not looked at God's creation if you don't think God is creative. In fact, you can just take a moment and look around the room and see how creative God is, right? He's creative. And he wants us to mirror the majesty of who he is. And so uh, coming up, we have a phenomenal display. In fact, I would tell you in 31 years of ministry, yes, I started when I was two, 31 years of ministry, we have never, I've never been a part of anything more creative than the Jesus story. The Jesus story is our Christmas production coming up on December the 18th. And uh, I'm telling you, the, 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 the level of detail, the level of creativity, uh, it is going to be absolutely incredible, including some filming from Bethlehem. I'm just telling you, this is going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal event. So creativity is important for us. Next, we celebrate the kingdom of God through diversity. And for us, you know, as, as you look around, you can tell we're, we're probably one of, if not the most diverse church ethnically in the entire area of Memphis. But for diversity for us, yes, it means ethnicity or melanin shade or color, but it also means diversity of age. Three years ago, when God called me here, this, this was a church that was growing older. The average age was getting older and older every year. And by the grace of God, by you following and trusting that, hey, we're going to lead by principle and not by our own preferences, right? By the choices that you've made. Now, I can, I'm happy to tell you, we are a church that is growing younger and younger. And people who understand kingdom principles know that we've got to grow younger in order to reach the people. Because let me tell you, our culture is spending billions of dollars sowing lies into our children, and we have got to be ready to fight and stand for and to build in and to invest in our younger generations, or we're going to lose an entire generation. And I don't know about you, but that's not okay on my watch. And so, yes, we're going to grow younger. It doesn't mean that for us older people, amen, that we are forgotten. No, that's not what that means. It's not a zero-sum proposition. What it means is that we're going to intentionally invest in the younger generation and in the next generation of believers. And so diversity is not just skin color, it's age as well. Uh, next, we exist to build the kingdom of God through maturity. We're not going to build God's kingdom unless we are mature. 
And, and when we say mature, what we mean is someone who is maturing. Don't talk to me about how mature you are as a believer unless you can point to who it is that you are maturing. Maturing doesn't mean that we've been here a long time. Maturing means that we are multiplying. And, and I don't know about you, but, but when I first became a dad, there was lots of preferences that I had to lay down. I had to lay down some preferences in order to extend my family, right? I mean, I had to start carrying things that I had never dreamed of carrying before. Come on, somebody. Uh, you know, before I had the first kid, like, I, I thought I used to have money. Come on, somebody. You, you got sometimes when you're expanding the family, you've got to lay down your preferences for the growth of the family. And that's what maturity means. It means that we understand as, as believers who've been doing this a little bit, as believers who've been saved a decade or, or four, we understand that it's not about us. We understand that it's about getting the message of Jesus Christ to make it hard to go to hell from Memphis. We understand that's what it's about. And so that's what maturity means for us. We exist to expand the kingdom of God through unity. And finally, we exist to propagate the kingdom of God through technology. Now, I got to admit, as a pastor, i would never heard of a church that put technology as a core value. And I was nervous about it. Jesus kept telling me to do it. And I was like, um, maybe that was some pizza I had the night before, you know. I don't know if this is God. And I knew in my spirit that it was God. So I put it in there. And, and here's, here's what I promise you. When I put it in there, I was like, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do with this. But I'm just being obedient. I don't know what this has to do with our core value. But let me tell you what God has done in the recent years as it relates to our intentional investment into the utilization of technology to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. What you're looking at is our YouTube numbers from the year 2021. Pretty impressive. Our subscriptions were up over 200, per, uh, 200 from the year before. That's a 158% increase from the year before. Um, <clears throat> last year, people all over the world watched our services 68,000 hours of our services. 68,000 hours. And when we heard that number last year, we were blown away that, that our services had been watched 68,000 hours. Um, that was up 999% over the year before in that same window. Our viewership was up a total of 294,000 for the year. So two, almost 300,000 people watched our services, different people, different uh, IP addresses, watched our services last year. Now, when we got to that, I thought, man, I, I, just, I, I just can't believe what all God has done. But can I tell you, that's not a drop in the bucket. Let me show you the first 10 months of the year 2022. Here we go. In the first 10 months, not a full year yet, subscriptions are up, up by 173 um, over the last year. People have watched our services 183,000 hours in the first 10 months of this year. Can we just give God some praise for that? A hundred and 83,000 hours. That's a lot of discipleship. That's a lot of life transformation. 183,000 hours. In the first 10 months of 2022, we've been watched by over 1.1 million IP addresses. Come on, can we give God praise for that? If you don't know what that means. It means different people. So we're on schedule to top 1.5 million viewers from our YouTube channel this year. So when God said, I want you to prioritize the utilization of technology, this is why. Because listen to me, for me, I don't care about the numbers. I care about the names behind the numbers. I don't care about the numbers. I care about the moms that are watching, the dads that are watching, the young adults that are engaging the Bible on a completely different level than ever before. That's what I'm concerned about. And so I am so grateful. Listen, if you to put, put this into uh, what we call a, a virtual congregate, here's how we come to that. We take 183,000 hours. 
which is the number of hours watched in the first 10 months of this year, we divide it by the amount of time that we've posted. So we've posted 150 hours of YouTube content this year in the first 10 months. That produces a virtual congregant of over 1,200 people that watch our services on a regular basis. Can we give God some praise for what God is doing through technology? So it's important to remember, again, it's not numbers, it's names. It's people, it's moms, it's teenagers. Their lives are being changed. Now, next, I'm going to remind us of our motto. Everybody get your pointer finger out, all right? Um, We don't cast stones here. In fact, we we do what Jesus tells us to do. Take the, the, the log out of our eye first before we point to somewhere else. So take that pointer finger, point it at yourself. Here's our motto. I want everybody to say it with me. Say, we are imperfect people loving. Now, I want you to take the pointer finger and point to the person next to you. Amen. Loving imperfect people and then point out in front of you toward a perfect Savior. Let's try it one more time. We are imperfect people loving imperfect people toward a perfect Savior. That's who we are. That's why we exist. There's not one of us that is perfect. We all are washed with the crimson blood that flowed down Mount Calvary. We all are made free because of the completed work of Jesus Christ. And so we're imperfect people, loving, imperfect people toward a perfect Savior. I want you to uh, go with me now, if you will, to Luke's gospel, chapter 5, and go with me to the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was preaching, and and let's take a look at Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, crowds pressed in around him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to put it out into the water, and he sat down in the boat and taught the crowds from there. I want to pause right now to remind us that Jesus was the most brilliant communicator that has ever existed. There is no one that can match his level of innovation and creativity He's the most brilliant communicator that ever lived. And he starts teaching on the shore, but crowds grew and grew and grew. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but over the last three years, even in the midst of this pandemic, God has enabled us to have a crowd that is growing, growing, growing. Isn't that a blessing? And here's what I would say. When Jesus is speaking, the crowds will grow and grow and grow. And Jesus has been speaking through you. And Jesus has been speaking through me. And God has been doing a great work here. So the crowds grew and grew and grew. At that point, the crowd could no longer hear the words that Jesus was speaking. And so he took the boat that was out in front of him. And he pushed it out a little ways. And he continued teaching from there. You know, this is so brilliant. And the reason is because Jesus, how many of you know, he's the creator of the cosmos. Uh, He's the architect of the universe. He is the engineer of the earth. Come on, somebody. Jesus knew that even as the crowd grew, they could no longer hear him. And so he had to get to a place where he could utilize, in essence, technology to amplify his voice. And as he spoke over the water, the water bounced his voice and magnified his voice. Have you ever been on one end of a pool and you're trying to whisper and gossip about somebody on the other end, but they hear you? It's not a good idea, right? Why? Because your voice travels across the water. Well, Jesus knew that, so he stepped in the boat, and he finished teaching. So the masses were able to hear because Jesus utilized technology. He found a way for more people to hear his voice, even though he wasn't doing anything 
different. More people heard the voice of Jesus and received salvation simply because Peter was willing to let Jesus use his boat. Now, Peter's boat was not some swanky ship. It was not a cutting-edge craft. It was not a ferry of fanciness. His boat was rather a tool of the trade. It was stained with fish guts. It was aged by decades of use, abuse, and weather. There wasn't anything fancy about Peter's boat. But Peter was willing to let the Lord use his boat. And because Peter let Jesus step aboard his boat, what was temporal was used to change people's eternal. Are you following me? The the, the boat was just something that was just a, it was just a temporal thing. It, It would only run for maybe even another decade before they would have to chop it up and use it for wood. It was temporal. And it was used for something eternal. It was ordinary, but when Peter let Jesus use it, when we give Jesus something that is ordinary, Jesus can do something extraordinary. It was every day. It was just an everyday thing. But when he gave it to Jesus, he took it and he used it for something that would change people's every day. Peter let Jesus use his boat last year. Many of you let Jesus use your boat and you gave above your tithe toward our Legacy Generosity Project. Just as a reminder, if if you didn't know, we we raised about $70,000 last year and the church took about another $30,000 for the install out of our operating budget. And, And we did a total renovation of all of our kids' spaces. And in case you haven't seen it, I want to take you there firsthand. Let's roll the clip. This is our brand new children's ministry area. Thanks to your willingness to let Jesus use your boat. Come on, can we make some noise? Your obedience is bringing kids and entire families to the kingdom of God. 
Um, I want to tell you, this past Sunday, we had our Fall Fest, uh, the most historic Fall Festival that we've had in our history. Um, we had over 800 people register, go through registration, and we had another 150 or more at least that bypassed registration, and we had about 50 workers. So all in all, over 1,000 people at our Fall Fest. Can we make some noise for that type of an outreach to our community? Here's the awesome thing. I was the, the greeter just inside the door. And so as they registered, they walked their, uh, their kids that were dressed like, you know, uh, different characters and whatever, expecting, ready to have a good time. We walked them strategically down the newly designed hallway. And my favorite thing to say all night long was, hey, you're going to walk all the way down to the trolley and turn left. And they were like, trolley? Wow. And I saw families getting selfies in different places that we had displayed all. Listen, it was incredible. You cannot tell me that after 800 people walking that hall and seeing the intentionality that City Church and the creativity that City Church is investing in their kids and in their age group, you cannot tell me that we will not receive a great harvest from that. Come on, if you're excited about that, give God some praise in this place. So real quick, I want to take you to our Fall Fest this past Sunday night and just take a quick look at some of the faces and some of the exciting things that were happening this past Sunday. everybody. Isn't that exciting? What a blessing. What a blessing. Take a look, if you will, at verse number four in Luke's gospel, chapter five. It says that when Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out into the deep and let down your nets to catch some fish. Now, this is key because you must deny your logic. Write it down if you're taking notes. You must deny your logic to receive the harvest that Jesus has for you. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, it was completely illogical for Peter to listen to what Jesus was saying for two reasons. Number one, you fish with nets at night. Uh, professional anglers, professional fishermen would not fish with nets in, in full daylight because the fish can see the nets coming. Secondly, when you fish with nets, it's better to do it in the, in the shallows because when you cast the net over them, they're going to swim down. If they're in the deep, they'll just swim out of the net. And so this was illogical from two different perspectives. However, Peter knew there was authority in what Jesus said. And if you can just get to the point where you understand and realize there is authority, ultimate authority, authority over fish, authority over circumstance, authority over your boss, authority over inflation, and authority over things that are going on in and around your life, the voice of Jesus has ultimate authority in our lives. And so Peter went against his training, went against his experience, and he trusted Jesus' illogical direction. Take a look at verse 5. He did protest a little bit. He said, Master, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. Now, some of us would have been like, no, I'm good. I just cleaned my nets. I don't want to get them dirty for nothing. But Simon understood there was authority in what Jesus said. He understood you can trust 
Jesus' words over your own experience. And so he went out into the deep and he cast down the nets. Some of you, maybe you've been working hard in a season that you feel like has been dry. I want to challenge you today to trust the Lord. To trust what the Lord is saying. To trust what the Lord puts on your heart. Today, God is going to ask you to trust him with something that for some may even seem illogical. But I want an unfathomable harvest in my life. And sometimes to get an unfathomable harvest, you have to do the illogical. Take a look at verse number six. And this time, somebody say this time. This time time is different than last time. This time, it says, that their nets were so full that they began to tear. And so they begin to pull in a harvest. They were pulling in a harvest of fish and the nets that they had relied on for decades, the nets that they had just mended, begin to break at the weight of the haul that they had. And so what I want you to understand is that when we trust even sometimes the illogical direction of Jesus, he will send us into a net breaking harvest. Here's why. When you take holy seed and you plant it in holy ground, it's going to produce a harvest that's on a holy another level. Come on, somebody. So let me ask a counterfactual question. What if Peter had told the Lord, no, I'm good. I just got my nets clean. I'm tired, Lord. I'm going to go take a nap. I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A. Grab a chicken biscuit, and then I'm going to take a nap. Not only would he have missed the miracle, but his colleagues would have missed the miracle as well. You know, God wants to do such a miracle in your life that it not only do you experience the blessing, but you have to call some colleagues to experience the overflow blessing that God has prepared for your life. God wants to do a miracle in your life, even financially, so much to where even your coworkers acknowledge that was God. It's too big. Listen, they were saying to themselves, I have seen Peter fish for decades, and he has never brought in something like that. So there must be something to this Jesus of Nazareth. There must be something to the power of his words. There must be something to his direction, to his wisdom. Take a look at verse 8. When Peter realized what had happened, when he realized that what Jesus said was true, that even though it was illogical, it brought an unfathomable harvest. The Bible says so much so that the boats started to sink. Do you know how many fish you got to have in your boat to lower the buoyancy level below the water crest? It was that much fish. We're talking on a scale unlike ever before. Come on, y'all to help me. It was incredible. When Peter realized what happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus. And he said, Lord, please leave me, for I am such a sinful man. You know, I'm asking today that you simply listen to Jesus' direction to you. And when we come for a time of commitment, I'm asking that you listen to his direction, even if it's illogical. In fact, I would tell you that if it's illogical and if it's Jesus, remember, what produces, according to Jesus' analogy, what produces a harvest of a hundred fold? It is good seed sown in good soil. Jesus said in the parable of the soil, when good seed falls on good soil, there's a harvest of a hundred fold. And so I'm asking you to simply obey what Jesus says to you, to trust And I believe you're going to have a net-breaking experience in your life. So Peter did two things. Two things that saw and brought about this great miracle. Number one, he let Jesus use his boat. He lent his boat to Jesus. 
He let the Lord use his bow. And secondly, he listened to Jesus' illogical direction. He let Jesus use his boat, and he listened to Jesus' illogical direction. Today, the Lord's going to ask to use your boat. We have some work to do. We have some vision to accomplish. We have some goals to achieve. And the Lord's going to ask for you to lend your boat to Jesus so that more people can hear about the life-changing message of Christ. Peter didn't lend Jesus his boat so he could hear better. Peter already knew who this was. That's why he called him master. He already knew that he was the son of God. Peter let Jesus use his boat so that others could hear. So today I'm asking for you to pray about two things. One, will you let Jesus use your boat? And today, our practice, how we're doing it is we're committing 100% of all of our tithe today, whatever tithe you would regularly bring, it's all going towards these projects that God has put on our heart that I'll share with you in just a moment. And so I'm asking for you to bring a sacrificial offering to the Lord, a cash offering to help with the vision that God has stirred within our hearts. And then secondly, I'm going to ask that you do something that may even seem I just want you mainly to, to follow Jesus' direction. Whatever Jesus tells you, it's going to be enough. Whatever he tells you, I just want you to obey that. Now, let me tell you about our generosity uh, projects this year, our legacy generosity. It encompasses three different things. One, um, <clears throat> we have on top of our roof uh, some air conditioning and heating units that are 26 years old. Um, how many of you know those were installed when Ronald Reagan was president? Okay, I want you to put that in perspective. How many of you know you are blessed if you've got some air conditioning units that are a quarter of a century old? To put that into perspective, a quarter of a century before that, there was no such thing as central heating air. And so we've got to replace them. We've already replaced some. Uh, we spent $30,000 out of our operating budget to replace some. We have another one we've got to replace for the sanctuary coming up in a couple of weeks. It's $33,000. So part of the project today is to go to take care of that. How many of you know that it's for us as Americans, it's kind of hard for us to focus on Jesus when it's difficultly cold in the wintertime and difficultly hot in the summertime? So we've, those are some things we've got to do. We, we uh, took care of the first one out of our operating budget. This one we're going to raise the funds for. I believe God has already has it taken care of. That's the first project. The second one I'm super excited about, and that is we're going to build a church in Udemogadis, Peru. Let me tell you about Udemogadis. I'd never heard of it until my trip there this past uh, summer. And um, this past summer, I was kind of, uh, stayed a couple of nights in Udemogras. I was not supposed to stay the particular day that I'm about to tell you about. Uh, we were supposed to be deep into the heart of a jungle that's the size of Texas. Now, let me tell you about the dynamic of Udemogras. Udemogras is the edge of civilization for Peru. So it's the last roads. Beyond the river, there's a river that, that encompasses uh, and goes on one side of Udemogras. Beyond that river is a jungle the size of Texas, literally, with no roads, no electricity. But it's filled with hundreds of thousands of indigenous people. And there's no law, there's no, I mean, it's completely unstructured. Each tribe has their own law and all that kind of stuff. Well, what the tribe does is that they, they send their children out to the banks of the river to fish. They've been doing it for centuries. And... Um, unfortunately, human traffickers have picked up on that as an opportunity. Eudemogadus, I was told to my shock, is the second most human traffic port in the entire world. You may think to yourself that it, wouldn't it be like Mumbai, India, or uh, perhaps Bangkok, Thailand, or some place where there's just millions and millions of people. The problem here is access. So, all these kids are fishing for their villages all up and down these rivers. And the, the rivers go on for eight hours in a fast boat. And, um, and so what these traffickers do 
is they, they pull up in a high-speed boat, put guns on the kids, steal them from the banks, and they're never heard from again. And so therefore, Eudemoglus becomes the second most human trafficking, and it's all kids, children, babies. And so City Church is going to build a church in the heart of that darkness. We're going to hang a lantern on the doorpost of hell. We're not going to just let it happen to those kids anymore. We're going to stand up and say, the light of God is going to go out. We're going to build a lighthouse that's going to beam darkness. And we're going to see transformation to that problem in Jesus' name. But I didn't know that before I went. Like I said, we were supposed to be deep into the heart of the jungle on this particular day. I believe it was a Tuesday. And uh, the, the, the flights that were available, the bush planes were, were just not available. And we went everywhere. We could, the missionaries were like, I, this never happened. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on. And anytime that happens, I'm like, you know, God is ordaining our steps. And so the next morning uh, we had breakfast and the missionary said, hey, I'm gonna call this pastor and we'll see if, if he's around and can, can meet us. And so we went to this church property and there's no church there. It's just a, a, a property. Um, there is a church there, but there's, there's, not, there's not a church building, but there's a church. They meet there just kind of out in the open. And they've been doing that for eight years on this property. Well, we get there and the first person we meet is Kevin. Uh, you're taking a look at a picture of Kevin right now on your screen. Kevin, we found out once we got there, was uh, just... Four days before our arriving, he, his mother died, and, and he was home alone with his mother. He kept trying to wake her up, and there was no one else. There's no family, no extended family. He's never met his dad. And so after hours and hours of trying to wake up his then-deceased mother, he went to a neighbor, and the neighbor came over and said, I, I'm so sorry, but she's gone, baby. And the neighbor was not in a financial position to take care of the kid. And concerned that the kid would be swept up by the human traffickers, they brought him to this church property. Remember, there's no building there. It's just an empty piece of property. And next door is someone who attends the church. Well, they temporarily took Kevin in. They said, well, you know, he can stay with us. What you're looking at uh, to Kevin's left is a typical abode there in Udemagras, Peru. Uh, it's dirt floor. Uh, the exterior is a composition of whatever type of wood they can find and fasten together. There's a tin roof that's over it, and it's just a couple of rooms. Well, that's where Kevin lives now. Uh, Kevin's only possession is the book that he has in his hand and the clothes that he had on his back. That's all he had. But can I tell you that what we found, what Cash and I found, is Kevin was the most joy-filled person that we met at that church. He was smiling, and I was thinking, how is this kid smiling? He had, y'all listen to me, he had supernatural joy to have just lost his mother, to not know where his dad is, never met his dad, and everything he knew is gone. Now he's living with people that he's never met before, but when he met us, he just lit up. There was a supernatural joy on his life, and I said to Cass, do you want to take him with us? you want to take him back to America? Cass said, Absolutely. And as it turns out, as you know, international adoption is just not that easy. It's not as easy as, you know, smuggling a kid back, right? I would start my own prison ministry as it relates to that. We don't want to do that. But I was praying about it. God, what do you, what, what, what do you want to do? What's going on with Kevin? And the Lord revealed to me a mighty anointing that's on Kevin's life. That's why there was supernatural joy in the midst of darkness. There was a mighty calling on his life, a mighty anointing on his life. And the Lord told me that Kevin is central to this church's future. I don't know if he's going to be a youth pastor. Come on, somebody. I don't know if he's going to be, I don't know. Maybe he's going to be the pastor one day. All I know is that God said he's central to that church. And the worst thing we could do is to take him away. Because he needs that church and that church needs him. Well, shortly after that, the pastor arrived. Now remember, they've been praying for this property to be turned over, to be legally put in the name of the Assemblies of God for eight years. Every day, that was their prayer. Every day, they were believing God for that property to be transferred over into the name of the Assemblies of God so that they could start building. As opposed to telling you about this miracle, I want to take you there. Let's go now to the church in Eudemagnus, Peru.
in Unity Bibles with Pastor Orlando. And uh, Pastor Orlando is visiting to build a church here on a piece of property that they've uh, they've acquired, and he wants to share uh, his testimony and how this all came about with you guys today. So, Pastor Orlando, tell us. Qué bien, ingeniero, gracias, gracias a todos por, por conocerlos, una bendición conocerlos y tenerlos aquí en Yurimau. Es una bendición tener a ustedes aquí hoy, es una bendición saber a ustedes. Durante los ocho años he sido de búsqueda al Señor, eh, que Dios nos considere un terreno donde poder construir la, el templo del Señor. Y, y hoy día se hace un hecho real, ¿no? O sea, hoy día vamos a firmar los documentos en la notaría for eight years we've been praying for a piece of property to build a church on it and now today they're signing the papers on this piece of property didn't know that we were coming today uh we believe that you know it's just a, a godly divine appointment because he didn't know we were coming and we didn't know he was signing the papers today so here we are eight years we've been praying for this piece of property Misionero, este proyecto, nosotros, nuestra visión es construir acá, este, tener la, la iglesia con ambientes para niños, para jóvenes. Tenemos también un anexo por Arica, también, que estamos viendo, visitando la comunidad de Nueva Arica. Y hay. He said he wants to build a church in this community to reach the kids and the youth and the people of this community. They also have a, a, a daughter church uh, in a community, in a Shawi community. Uh, probably, ¿cuántas horas? Una hora, dos horas. Dos horas. Two hours away from here. Entonces, en eso nosotros nos hemos proyectado en la visión. No nos hemos quedado con las manos cruzadas, en lo poco que tenemos, hemos trabajado, hemos reunido un dinero. Y, pero estamos agradecidos de poder ya dar una iniciativa. Ya. Pero el, el, la señora que, la hermana es también de la iglesia, no es acá en Yurimago, en Lima, es un, un familiar del hermano que congrega en la iglesia acá. He said that, uh, they have been sitting here with their hands folded, they've been working the whole time uh, with what little bit they've had, well, planting a church in another community. Even though they don't even have a church of their own, uh, they're planting churches and you know, doing the Great Commission. He said he wants to give an invitation to uh, Pastor Chris and his church to come back and help them uh, finish this dream out and make this a reality of building a church here in this community. Uh, bienvenidos. Welcome. How many of you believe it's God's will for us to build that church? For eight years, they've been praying. And the day that we showed up, when we were supposed to be deep into the heart of that Texas-sized jungle, the day we showed up, they had just signed the papers. And so now they're free to build on that property. Come on. I think we ought to give the Lord some praise for his divine ordinance on that day. The final project that is desperately urgent is we need to finish out our LED structure here. Um, I'm just curious, how many of you appreciate how we've been able to bring the Bible to life through the utilization of this LED structure? Come on, make some noise if that's been a, something that's been a blessing to you. Well, what I'm here to tell you is that what, what we have is just half of what it is needed to complete it. And so we need to complete this uh, LED structure project. Uh, the Lord began to speak to me that uh, we're not going to be able to fill up the balcony like we need to without being able to get a high quality image magnification where the people that are in the far reaches of our room are able to have an up close experience. As you can tell by looking at our screens that are up there, they were good until they weren't. Come on somebody, right? And, uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to finish out this LED structure so that you have a high quality image magnification to where wherever you are in this, in, the, in this facility, you're going to have a first class seat and a first class experience. And so we want to finish that out. All of these projects together are $130,000. Now, I'm excited because we already have uh, just over $30,000 in pre-commitments before today. Can we give some praise to the Lord for that? So all we need today is about $99,000 to complete this. Now, remember, all of your tithe for today, don't like commit multiple months of tithe to this, but just whatever you're going to give today in your tithe, that's all going toward the cash project. I'm asking that you would do like Peter. And let the Lord use your boat by giving a cash sacrifice. And I would tell you that it needs to be a sacrifice. I, I, I have no quorums and no problems about telling you that we should sacrifice to our God. 
David said it like this, I will not give the Lord that which costs me nothing. And there is something that happens when we trust the Lord and just say, Lord, I'm going to lend you my boat. It's not ours anyway. Hey, if you begin to think all of it's yours, just, just, just watch. Well, I'm just telling you, it's not yours. And so we're going to trust the Lord and give a cash offering today above our tithe and with our tithe to get this project knocked out. But in addition to that, on, on your way in, I want to ask the ushers to come down the aisles right now and, and uh, get, get ready to distribute. If you need an envelope or if you need a pen, then they are there to serve you. Uh, just raise your hand and they'll get one to you shortly. And so here's what we're asking. That in just a moment, uh, you'll take some time and fill out this card. You can say what you're giving today as a sacrifice. And you can say what you plan to prioritize over a 10-month period. Now, let me tell you how uh, God spoke me to, to do. So I'm giving um, a large amount today, and I'm matching that large amount over the course of the next 10 months. Starting in the month of December, for me, I'm choosing it to come out on the 15th. I put my credit card information down there so I never have to worry about it. We did this last year. We had no problems. What's going to happen? They'll go into a lot box. That'll be processed by Pam, who's been with our church for uh, uh, a long time. I, she's young, though. Don't worry about it. She's been here a long time. Very, very highly trusted if you don't know her. And once it's processed, then all that information will be destroyed. Uh, but that way, you can, you can prioritize your generosity on a monthly basis. Here's what it helps me to do. And I want to speak to maybe some of the younger people. Uh, I, uh, and, and I want to speak to you because th by prioritizing it this way, by putting your debit card or credit card information down there and having it come out whenever you desire it to come out, um, you prioritize that generosity. And you don't have to work. You're not going to forget about it. It, it will be automatic, and, and, and at the end of September, it'll be, the, it'll be the end of it. So it starts in December, and it goes through uh, September. And what that allows people like me to do is to get to the number that God has put in my spirit. And so for you, you know, maybe you want to give it all at once, whatever God puts on you. That's great. But maybe you want to prioritize a certain amount. And you can look at it like, for instance, if, uh, if we have 10 people to commit to giving $4,000 and we have 30 people to commit to giving $1,000. You break that down for, for those who are giving $4,000, uh, like you can give $2,000 today and then $2,000 over the course of that 10 month period. What $2,000 looks like when you break it down to the week is $50 a week. Uh, for some, you could give $25 a week. And, and I, I'm asking for you to pray about it. I'm, I don't want you to feel pressured about it. Uh, if you don't know me, I, I've actually, since I've been here, I will preach on giving. I will preach on tithing. But God has not led me to as of yet. Uh, and so, but I, I have no problems asking for, for us to come together and fulfill this vision. Last year, we raised $70,000. And listen, it is paying incredible dividends as we've invested in our kids. I can't wait to see the harvest that God has for us. So I just want to challenge you. Will you lend Jesus your boat by giving today sacrificially? And will you consider giving in a priority fashion from uh, December the 15th or the 1st through September the 15th or the 1st? At this time, I want Jarvis to come and he's going to share just a brief testimony. So everybody, this... I wanted to share a little bit, Pastor had asked me, and as I thought about it, I was actually even sitting here just thinking about it, um, I wanted to think about, and I'm not going to talk about giving today, I'm going to share from last year about the commitment we made to the legacy offering. So for me, I understood that, okay, it's obedience. And then it's understanding, and you follow through with that. So I was obedient to what God said. We were obedient to what God said, and there was an understanding. I grasped the concept. I understood why we were doing it, but there was one thing that had yet to come to pass for me, which was the illumination behind it. 
So oftentimes you can say I'm walking in obedience and understanding, but you might not have the illumination. So the illumination occurred for me last, when, last Sunday when me and Pastor were standing greeting the people and I started passing out candy and I saw the children walk through. And a couple of, ch couple of the children said, wow, this is cool. And they said to their parents, can I come back? Can I show up again? And that was the illumination. Because see, I was thinking about just a traditional offering, but for me, it came to me, legacy means something that's historic, that's, that's gonna go on for time, that you, it's not about now, it's about the future. So the illumination was for me that, okay, even though I might not see all the reward of what's happening from the gift right then, but it's, it's, it's over time, the people that will be impacted, the lives that will be touched, and just hearing the children say, can I come back, was a part of that illumination, like, yeah, this is legacy, it's, it's, it's the start of it, now it's up to us to make sure that they have something to grab hold to and something to continue to drive forth in. So that's about our giving, it's about our time and our commitment, and the Lord spoke to me saying, hey, now you see, based on your obedience and your understanding, the illumination. The children saying it and their eyes lighting up. It doesn't stop there. That's just the beginning of the work. That's just the beginning of the commitment we have to give. But that was the illumination. So as you think about a legacy offering, think about that. It's not about I'm going to sow this seed and I'm going to see the harvest tomorrow because it's about legacy. It's about the work that will be done over time. So remember that when you pray to God, what do you want me to give and how much you want me to be involved in this over time? Because it's not just about today. Today is just the start. That was for me, but I pray it was for you as well that follow in obedience, get an understanding, and then watch God illuminate it for you. During the course of this song, we're going to get up uh, once we have our commitments completed. We're going to walk down. You're going to put them, the information here. Now, if you're a little reserved about putting your credit card information down, I get it. Just simply put call for information and Pam will call and it'll all be confidential and safe and you won't have to worry about that. Or you can just write it down. Um, I put uh, my information in uh, previously. And so I, I'm just telling you, it's, it's, uh, we do everything we can to safeguard you in that regard. And so... I just want to put a challenge. I believe that everybody, I believe that everybody can make a difference. Uh, and you may say, well, pastor, it's almost like you didn't know that everything was more expensive these days. No, I know. I know. But, but here's, here's what the Word of God says in Genesis chapter 26. It says, Isaac sowed seed in the time of famine and God blessed it. Isaac sowed seed in the time of famine, and God blessed it. And the reason that's important is because we understand he's the blesser. Yes. And when he blesses, it, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. What matters is when you take holy seed and you put it in holy ground, it produces a harvest that's on a holy another level. I want to pray for God's blessings over you. And so we're going to all stand up. And uh, I just want to ask you, so when the song starts, at any point in the song, make your way down front, put your commitments here together, and let's worship the Lord. Let's celebrate what God is doing. And let's get excited. I don't know about you. I can't wait to see that structure going up in Utamogadus. Uh, you may not ever know that the air conditioning was swapped out. We'll take pictures of it. <laughs> but I promise you will know when it's cool next winter, next summer, and when it's hot next winter. And so, uh, and, and, and you will see, absolutely, it will dramatically improve your worship experience once we finalize this LED structure. So I'm so excited. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for listening to Jesus today. Almighty God, today we sow seed, holy seed, good seed into good ground. And Lord, your word says that when we sow good seed in good ground, there's a harvest of a hundredfold. So Lord, I declare and decree that for every person of obedience today. 
I pray that you would shower your abundance, your blessing. Lord, bless them, even like you did Isaac. Even if famine is going on around them, I pray you would bless them in the midst of it. I pray you would prosper their harvest in the midst of it. Lord, I thank you for the promise that we have as we hold on to your eternal promises. Bless our sacrifice as we lend you our boat, as we take your steps of obedience into that deep water and trust you for the next level of legacy. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.
oceans rise, my soul rests in your embrace, for I am yours, you are mine. Well, hey there, everybody. Pastor Travis back here and I want to say once more how much I appreciate you guys being here and joining us right here at City Church Live. It is just such a blessing to be able to come together and worship the Lord and to have all of you guys joining us uh, from wherever you're joining us from. It means just so much and so thank you for being here today. And look, maybe you've been here for uh, several times, maybe it's your first time here Either way, we would love to get to know you guys. Um, if you haven't gotten to know us, we would love to do that. So in order to do that, we would just ask that you would text the word City VIP to the number 94000. When you do, we'll send you a link so that you can fill out a little information so that we can get to know you guys. And then in return, we will send you back some information about what God is doing right here at City Church and through City Church all over the world. So once again, if you would like some more information about City Church, we would love that. Text the word City VIP to the number 94000. And guys, if you're wanting to jump in and be a partner with us with some of the things that Dr. Foster was talking about this morning, we would love to have you guys partner with us. So there are several ways that you guys can give today. You can give on our app. You go to the app store, look for City Church Memphis, and you'll find us right there with our logo. Or you can go to our website, citychurch.live slash give, and you can give securely on the website. Or you could text the word us city to the number 888-364-4483 as well and you can give securely on your phone as well but however you guys want to jump in and join in giving we would really appreciate that and just want to say from the bottom of our heart thank you guys and because of people like you we're actually able to support uh, the work of God that's going on all over the world, over 50 missionaries are being supported because of your generous giving. So we want to say thank you so much for that. Well, until next week, guys, we want to say thanks again for being here. I hope that you have been blessed this Vision Sunday, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. God bless you. Hey, City Church, it's Jeff Pitts, lead pastor of the Collectives Church in Cleveland, Tennessee. We want to say thank you for your prayers and your partnership as we aspire to reach the community of Cleveland and the campus of the university. Our heart is pretty simple. Reach the lost, raise disciples, and release them into God's purpose for their life. We want to be a welcoming place for the community, a landing place for college students, and a sending place for those who feel called of God to their nations and to their neighbors. We want to thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for believing in us. We hope to connect with you really soon.